Okay. Well, uh, then time to, to start. Then welcome to all participants and uh, thanks to be with us despite the terrific events uh, that are happening now in, in Ukraine. Uh, my name is Marc Clouse from Liège in Belgium. I am the president of the IESEP, the International Association uh, for, of Physical Education in Higher Education. As most of you know, ISEP's missions are to empower a global community of professionals in the areas of sport pedagogy and physical education through the dissemination of high quality and relevant research. We nurture scholarly talent through leadership development and building an inno innovative and inclusive community. We lead collective actions to promote effective physical and health education, physical activity, and sport participation across the, the lifespan. It's my real pleasure to coordinate this ISAP Connect. 40 years ago, David Bunker and Rod Torp published the TGFU model, presenting the principles of an original approach designed to teach game sports. Since then, practical and scientific work contributed to disseminate the concept worldwide. Collaboration between ISF and TGFU scholars began in 2002 during the World Congress organized in La Coruña in Spain. Some years later, under the leadership of Len Almond, the TGFU became the first ISF special interest group. Today, four colleagues involved in that group will present the state of the art of their domain. We'll have the pleasure to listen, not exactly in the same order, but Professor Linda Griffin, University of Massachusetts Amherst, USA, TGFU SIG president, Professor David Guterres, University of Castilla-La Mancha, Spain, TGFU SIG past president, Dr. Shen Pill, Flinders University in Australia, Leadership Fellow of the TGFU SIG, and Ellen Gambles, PhD student at the University of Sunderland, UK, TGFU Treasurer. If you want to have more information about TGFU, please check on their website, www.tgfu.info. The four speakers will have 40 minutes to illustrate the content, and then we'll have a period of 15 minutes for Q&A. Please ask your question in the chat during the presentation. It will be easier for us to manage the exchange after that. Well, now it's up to you. Then uh, the first presenter will be Shen Pil. Please. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Mark. Good job, Helen, loading up the slides. Thank you very much. I'm speaking today from Adelaide, South Australia. It's about 9.35 in the evening here in South Australia. Um, I speak to you from Ghana land and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and acknowledge the continuing custodianship of the lands and waters of the Adelaide Plain by the Ghana people. This land always was and always will be Ghana land. Celebrating 40 years, a significant milestone in the organisation of teaching games for understanding into a, some might call it a society, some have called it a special interest group, some have called it a secret society with a special handshake. Um, but 40 years for any entity is a significant milestone and we celebrate and acknowledge the work of Rod, David and Len in this anniversary year. Next slide, please, Alan. The mission of the TGFU SIG is quite simple, and that's to disseminate the idea, to bring uh, like-minded people together in scholarship, fellowship, and research, uh, simply the promotion, dissemination, the construction, the identification of information to promote the ways of knowing, learning, and teaching through games-based approaches. The Teaching Games for Understanding Special Interest Group has 
its major goal of international cooperation. And we see that through the International Advisory Board and the uh, multinational composition of the TGFU executive, some of which the members are today. Next slide, please, Alan. It's important to acknowledge that while we celebrate 40 years of the particular idea of teaching games for understanding, the idea of a games-based approach as a particular way of constructing the flow through a lesson is not a new idea. This um, image on the screen at the moment, which comes from a 1954 book between a collaboration between an Australian academic, Bert Willey, and I don't know the Christian name of, of Williams, shows a possible lesson formation that most of us would recognise as consistent with a game-based approach. Uh, again, emphasising that the idea itself of being game-based and the, the thing we're trying to teach is the game, and so the game should be the focus of a lesson, the game should be the majority experience of a lesson, is of itself not necessarily uh, new. Next slide, please, Alan. Some of the more uh, well-known iterations of game-based approaches uh, in the sport have been Wade's work in 1967, which is considered in English language uh, countries, particularly seminal in the idea of promoting uh, match simulation, small-sided games, functional training and tactical practice as variations of games that create the core of a practice session. Wade also advocated that directed instruction of particular techniques should occur outside of the practice session. So the practice session is there to practice the game. And that may have these different types of practice sessions, depending upon the feature of the game that you're wanting to practice. Outside of the game may be the warm up and the closure of the lesson. So it's not outside of the necessarily day that we turn up to practice. But the emphasis is again, that we turn up to learn how to play the game. And the best way to learn to play the game is by practicing the game. Eric Worthington, who was also at Loughborough University and then came out to Australia to be the first director of football for the then Soccer Australia. He released a very influential book in 1974, which picked up many of the ideas that I understand were common at Loughborough University during his time there and extended upon Alan Wade's 1967 work in particular with the notion of principles of play as a way of organising the content of practice. So rather than specific techniques being the central organising feature, we could recognise concepts, which he called principles of play, and organise our training to teach those principles of play. He also introduced into the literature the idea of freeze replays, where the game was a tactical whiteboard. And if you could freeze a game at a particular moment with the players in situ, you could unpack the, both the team's strategic dimension and the individual tactical dimensions and work through the player's alternatives for that particular scenario in a type of living blackboard. He also talked about the use of what he termed conditioned games and the idea of conditioning games became quite a prominent pedagogical theme in Australia from the time of Worthington's work. The idea of conditioned games seems very similar to the idea of a constraints-led approach now, where you deliberately manipulate aspects of the game in order to bring about a particular focus for the practice and to create the game as a problem-solving space. Next slide, please, Ellen. In the physical education literature, we see seminal work from Malden and Redfern in 1969 who writing for primary school physical education and a new way of approaching the teaching of games came up with a lesson model. Again, very game-based, begin with a game, suspend the game, create some inquiry about the game that's being played, uh, preferably using questions to guide that inquiry. As a result of that inquiry, you find some elements that need to be practiced. After that practice, there is a return to the game to find out whether what's been practiced has been incorporated as a new way of doing or being or understanding the game. The curriculum was set out over four stages of game development from stage one exploratory play to stage two individual skill acquisition to stage three, the ability to play with others and stage four competing with others and the making of games. And that's 1969. Next slide, please, Ellen. 
which brings us to 1982 and the release of uh, the Bulletin of Physical Education and the seminal work of Bunker and Thorpe, which released details of the trials that they had been doing in schools um, to direct a new way of thinking about games teaching away from the isolation of techniques without context to their application and therefore the inability of many people to apply what had been learned to games when it was time to start with the game. Whereas what's been often called a traditional or common approach ends with a game and the question is, when are we going to play a game? The teaching games for understanding model starts with a game, moves to developing an appreciation of what is possible within the game because the rules allow certain things and constrain or inhibit other things from happening. Once we have an appreciation of the possibilities within the game, as individual players, we can then start to uh, explore the tactical awareness, which leads to our uh, possibilities for what to do, but also how to do it. And so we have this technical and tactical dimension as complementary and indeed coupled ideas, not separated from each other. We then move into understanding how to do that technical and tactical combination skillfully, which leads, to, leads us to an examination of performance in the game from the area that we've been focusing on. So again, we return to the game in order to commence the next six step cycle again. Next slide, please, Alan. Thorpe and Bunker, like previous game-based uh, models, had pedagogical principles to guide the um, working through the six steps of the model. The first one was game sampling. Uh, games have similar representation and just as Molden and Redfern suggested that representation uh, could be used to classify games into categories, Bunker and Thorpe's pedagogical model included what we might now describe as the thematical approach to the construction of the curriculum using the four game categories that they identified through common principles of play to the games and the categories. Exaggeration was the principle that we can modify game rules to specify specific tactical problems to investigate during the gameplay. So we can exaggerate the size of a field. We can exaggerate the shape and dimensions of a goal. We can exaggerate the number of players that occur. Representation is the idea that we can modify games and retain the inherent logic, the tactical structure of the full version, but in a scaled back form of the game. And tactical complexity is ensuring that whenever we modify a game, it is appropriate to the challenge point of the students and meets them at their level of readiness to participate in the learning that we've targeted for that group. Next slide, please, Ellen. What we've seen since 1954 in that initial slide where we see what seems very similar to tactical and game-based models um, that we see in the literature today is that there have been developments in game-based approaches that add to the ideas layer by layer into the model. And you know, Bunker and Thorpe brought together a particular way of viewing a game-based approach from the tactical to the technical, which was a revolutionary idea for its time. Since then, we've seen adaptations, variations and nuances of that idea, sometimes to address perceived um, additions that are needed to the model, such as the tactical games approach, which was adding in game performance assessment and in some ways simplified um, the progression through the model to make it easier for teachers to understand. We see in those variations that we've identified there that the USA, the UK and Australia have been particularly uh, influential in the literature in the description of variations of game-based approaches. And that would indicate that uh, the physical education curriculums of those countries moving from behaviorist approaches, which put the emphasis on teacher control and direct instruction, have moved towards constructivist understandings where the student is at the center and understanding of the student learning needs means that we build inquiry oriented uh, curriculum environments and teaching games for understanding and game-based approaches are ideal for the games and sport focus area and the construction of an inquiry oriented curriculum to meet those curriculum frameworks in those countries. Next slide, please. Thanks, Ellen. And now I pass over to David. 
Thank you, Shane. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm David from Spain, now talking from Finland, doing a, a research stay with my colleague, uh, Jan-Erik Romar, here in my <laughs> in the office. So uh, I'm talking about the developments of the game-based approach and part, uh, departing from the TFU uh, initial publication. In the, throughout the 80s until the first century, there was a rapid theoretical expansion and global popularization of TFU. Researchers have sought to understand that the approach and its applicability to numerous, numerous theories. For example, situated learning, constructivism, schema theory, and complexity theory. It's also interesting to see that this from the first years of the 21st century, where well, more than 20 years after the publication of the model, when the research begins to be extensive, growing during these last two decades in number and diversifications. Uh, next slide, Ellen, please. Yeah, as Shane has said, uh, the initial DFU guiding principles have had different interpretations and variations across a number of countries, with the most notable being the game science in Australia, and the tactical games approach in the United States. There are other many contributions from different approaches and offers. In the following slides, I would like to show that initial ideas explained uh, by Shane, the first part, has been developed deeper and wider in different areas and strategies of the teaching and coaching games. Next slide, please. For example, uh, related with the structure uh, Steve Mitchell, Judy Oslin, and Linda Griffin uh, proposed a simple and very useful extractor by levels. Also developed uh, assessment tools like GBAI, very useful for teaching, very useful for practitioners to understand uh, how to apply to different levels uh, the games teaching that normally is, can be struggling in terms of uh, how to, uh, to develop the, a full curriculum. Other, other uh, approaches like invasion game competence model for invasion games or step game approach for volleyball, a specific sport in this case, have uh, tried to develop and propose a, structure, um, a specific structure to guide teachers in applying the approach. Next slide, please. There has been also very interesting uh, proposals in trying to uh, get the approach to the uh, first ages, so the first stage. The transitional phase between early years and sport age has been um, addressed by different authors. For example, in Desi Slate with uh, Transforming Play, uh, and he proposed uh, fundamental movements within a tactical game environment, or Play with Purpose by Shane Pill, Within the same uh, game science theory, uh, it develops a teaching guide for early years. Also, Ball School from Germany, uh, it stands that children, children are not specialists, but all rounders. So, in the first phase of this approach, it proposed generic, playful situation oriented, it forms appropriate for the first experience of very young children building quite soon the foundation for tactical complex categories like invasion games. Next slide, please. One of the main strategies in game-based approach is questioning, but also is one of the part that teachers and coaches usually struggle with. So there are some proposals, very interesting proposals from different approaches and offers. For example, tactical decision learning model proposed the debate of ideas. It's an acting project where kids has uh, their own debate and develop this uh, strategy through uh, discussion. Another proposal is from PlaySport that uh, focus on the affected domain of, uh, of the game by questioning, very interesting. So we, we are seeing that um, different proposals have, go, uh, have uh, went, gone deep into some strategies to facilitate and elaborate materials for, for teachers. So next slide, please. In terms of motivation and creativity, uh, there's also uh, 
different approaches have uh, proposed different um, uh, books and materials. For example, play practice has a specific strategy uh, called enhancing or increase the motivation. Also, there are um, works like teaching tactical creativity in the sport, focus on the creativity through games or students designed games. Uh, there's also a big area now to explore how um, by designing their own games, they get understanding of the game and also build their creativity. Um, of course, they match very, very good with uh, motivation because kids are playing their own games. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of uh, context adaptation of country adaptation, we have two different approaches. For example, in Singapore, they developed a games content approach, uh, originally from TGFU, and they uh, stick with this approach for the whole country. So they made their own approach to spread out through schools and very successfully implement it. On the other side, we have uh, examples like in Spain and Netherlands, where uh, we are working with uh, not a specific approach, but uh, with the game-based approach as a general global approach, trying to combine all the these strategies in uh, materials and books for teachers and teacher educators. Next slide, please. Also has been uh, good adaptation to different contexts, uh, as initially TGFU and game-based approach were more focused on teaching in physical education, uh, so context um, settings. There have been uh, proposals that uh, have fit very well into coaching, but game science probably the, the approach that has been more successful in uh, achieving this uh, big, big context for for teaching games and coaching and also there have been some very nice and interesting proposal for beginners and volunteers because sometimes even teachers uh, have a, a struggle with game-based approach principles and when they are beginners in this uh, approach and they have a, a good background in terms of pedagogy when it comes to beginners or volunteers that normally coach uh, young kids is very sometimes very very tough. So there are some proposals to to for this kind of beginners, coaches, beginners to apply the, the approach uh, in a smooth way. Next, uh, Ellen, please. And finally, uh, one of the developments I, I, I would like to 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 address is the the game based approach is uh, focusing the in the game learning, but uh, it's a lot to do with the affected domain. Uh, for example, it matched perfectly with sport education because it's uh, more focused on the game learning, but the sport education more about the, the affective and social development. And further, there have been uh, some proposals like playing fair from Joe Butler or positive pedagogy uh, from Richard Wright that uh, with the base of game-based approach, the main focus is the affective domain. Again, uh, transfer the, the main principle of uh, TGFU. So I pass now to the next presenter. Thanks, David, I appreciate it. Uh, this is Linda Griffin from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, six, 26 in a snowstorm morning, so it should be a very interesting day for the university is closed. So I'm uh, doing the history um, of how we got to be a SIG. So our first um, conference um, was in 2001, and the, the major leadership role for the TGFU SIG belongs to Joy Butler. Um, she is stalwart and was stalwart at making sure that we tried to become a community and she was very committed to that. And we very much appreciate her legacy. So we had a conference in 2001 in New Hampshire, not far from where Joy was at the time at Plymouth State. And our conference was completely focused on teaching games for understanding and physical education and sport. In fact, our first keynotes were Len Allman, David Kirk, Judy Oslin, and Scott Kretschmeyer. 
Uh, based on that meeting, there was a, a conference. We had a town hall meeting in which the group decided that they wanted to become a group. And so we became a TGFU task force in 2001. Uh, based on that conversation, we kept thinking, well, how can this little organization become um, influential in some ways? So our, at the time, I believe Ron Feingold was the mark of ISEP. And um, we had, uh, Joy had talked to him about, we needed a big international community to um, put ourselves within a structure. And so in conversation, we modeled it after the American Education Research Association, which created these special interest groups. So we thought, well, let's see if ISEP is uh, open to the idea of us being a special interest group in ISEP, and they were, and he, this is where we are today. So we then became, you know, became a group that had to create a, you know, governance, and we have a TGFU executive uh, board, and um, we have we were committed to having uh, meeting uh, conferences every uh, four years and um, also being involved in ISEP uh, in between the time. Um, next slide, please. One of the key features of the uh, SIG, I think, for me, is the sort of the international advisory board with representation for as many countries as we possibly can and I uh, to, to meet. And the uh, past president, uh, David, is in charge of that. So um, that group meets uh, about once a month and they take on initiatives and look and reflect upon where we've been and where we're going. Uh, and it's a very, very active group and committed group to the, uh, what I'll call the, the cause. Um, you know, we were in a situation because of the, the pandemic that we were ready to have our seventh conference, but it has been twice delayed, now canceled. So we're, we're being hopeful at finding a place to celebrate our 40th in a platform that can um, truly, truly um, celebrate this in a, in a more um, network, uh, close-knit presentation platform at some point. Uh, so we're working on that right now and to not lose our momentum for this 40th celebration. Um, next slide, please. Um, much of our um, initiatives at this time have has been around, um, we uh, created a leadership fellows and the goal of the leadership fellow of which Shane is one and Naoki is another, our two first fellows was to increase the board size without adding officers, but also in, in, that which increased the voice and uh, vision of where we're going, but also thinking of it as a, well, if you're a leader, maybe then you'll be chair elect because it, uh, understanding what the roles are of the executive um, board members that are officers, it takes a bit as we all know, and we've all done that in our careers. So we, ha we have this leadership fellows program and we have now have two leaders on our executive board. Uh, we're about to launch our award scheme and sort of our first awards will be around uh, the concepts of a Len Allman uh, honor award, uh, scholarship award. We're working out the details of that. And the other would be uh, a Joy Butler uh, Young Scholar Award or Early Career Scholar Award, and and we're working out the details to that, but we're hoping to launch that around the 40th. And the big, our big event right now is the 40th anniversary. Um, we have uh, an edited book coming out hopefully soon through Rutledge and uh, Shane's uh, Tuliage on that. Um, there's a um, a number of projects in the uh, the institution, you can see I work at the university, International Advisory Board um, and around professional development. Um, and we've also worked on thinking about who we are now after this, these number of years since 2001 becoming a task force to this organization and who we might be in the future. Uh, next slide. And one of the biggest things we've done right now is to broaden our, because of what you just saw, all these great things going on in the names of now what we are uh, committed to as games-based approach. So this is a major initiative by the IAB 
at their statement on consensus around this in um, working through a statement that can be supported by the TGFU SIG, uh, larger international community. So in order to promote terminology consistent among researchers and practitioners, the TGFU IAB suggests that the use of game-based approach to refer to the learner-centered teaching and coaching practice in which the modified game set the base and framework for developing thoughtful, creative, intellect, intelligent, and skillful players. Uh, the TGFU IAB also encouraged the use of games-based approaches to refer to several well-established approaches that follow the GBA, like TGFU, Game Sense, Play Practice, Technical Games Model, Ball School, Invasion Game Competence Model, and other similars. So that's a major initiative to do that. So we are at a place that we, the 40th gets us to look um, to look at ourselves, and we're, we're grateful to be in this spot to do that. And we're entering into some little bit of a strategic plan and to see where we are now that we're probably at about our third generation of membership and uh, um, longevity in our group as a SIG. And I'm now passing the baton to Ellen, who will tell us where we're going in the future. Thank you, Linda. This is Ellen Gambles from the University of Sunderland. Um, we've got quite a few areas that could be developed in the future. Uh, so, for example, the integration with other scientific disciplines and frameworks. So this could be looking at the application of games-based approaches through a psychology lens, for example, using different theories like complexity theory, uh, David mentioned earlier, we've had constructivism, we've had situated learning theory, all these sorts of theories can come together to help um, demonstrate the application of TGFU and games based approaches, with the aim of enhancing gameplay for all players, whether they are beginners, or whether they are more proficient. Research into this area can also encompass decision making, attention, um, and etc. Uh, another area could be through teacher and coach professional development. So exploring pre-service and in-service teachers and coaches learning when they are implementing a games-based approach. It could also link well with pedagogical strategies associated with games-based approaches, for example, facilitation, observation, questioning, analysis, etc. Another sort of big key area, as David mentioned a little bit earlier, is the games making and games designing. So how can we explore how to design these purposeful games that encourage tactical understanding and decision making with our students? Uh, a very key interesting um, topic that has emerged is how to use games to address equity and social justice. But how can we foster an environment where students can feel this sense of belonging and be respected through gameplay and can address any sort of uh, topics around equality, diversity, inclusion and social justice? So thinking about things like citizenship, etc. And another big area has been this implementation in different cultural backgrounds. As you will have noticed, many of the variations that we have are very Western orientated from social cultural backgrounds, particularly things like the TGFU, tactical games model. Therefore, identifying and examining how different global cultural characteristics um, impact games, how we can use them with indigenous sports, for example, all to help games teaching throughout the world. We are always very welcoming and encouraging of people to engage with some of these key debates to help meet changing the physical education landscape throughout the world. So as it's been mentioned earlier, this year is our 40th anniversary. We have a lot of different projects and events going on. Um, and I would like to share some of these with you today. So since May 2019, we have established a monthly guest blog where practitioners from around the world uh, provide a blog about 
a topic that interests them, something that impacts their practice or their research. So we have this monthly guest blog this year, really highlighting the differences with it now being and the developments of the 40th anniversary. So for example, our February guest blog written by Jenny Peterson, she discussed uh, parts of her findings from her PhD research. Earlier in January, Eva Guerra talked about how she could implement teaching games for understanding with the sport education model. She provided practical examples. So it's a really key kind of um, opportunity for our community to get involved and showcase what they are practicing, what they are researching, any sort of interesting topic that they think is appropriate within the games-based approaches field. This year as well, with the 40th anniversary, we've decided to implement some special blogs which highlight different models and approaches within our field. So we started off in January discussing the Malden and Redfern new approach that Shane mentioned earlier. In February, we had the Wade and Worthington um, approaches as well. We are going to be discussing the TGFU model. We are going to be discussing um, game sense. We are going to be discussing tactical games model. All these different sort of models and approaches that have emerged um, over the past 40 years, we want to highlight discuss what's happened to them, how were they formed, and provide any sort of example lesson ideas. A lot of our community, we find, um, really appreciate the practical application of some of these models. So this is what a key part of our celebrations is about. One of the other things is through the professional development um, aspect. We have a variety of webinars going on this year. So we've recently started our assessing in games-based approaches seminar last Saturday, um, each Saturday throughout the remainder of February into the early March. We will be having a different part of the webinar series. We will also be doing one on questioning more towards September, and we will have an equity in games-based approaches more towards October, November time. We are always trying to encourage to contact us to discuss if they would like to promote um, or present a webinar to us. We also have Dr. Suzuki, who is presenting global lesson studies, um, encouraging teachers to um, sign up and discuss sort of practical applications of different games based approaches. We've recently been uh, in conversation with the network Teaching Games. Um, from Fontis uh, School in the Netherlands. They are setting up their own symposium on the 8th of April uh, that we are joining with them that is encouraging and showcasing a variety of different games-based approaches that are out there. Other ideas we've been doing are the PE Matters article through the Association for PE in the UK. We are publishing something in mid-March. Uh, discussing the celebration of the 40th anniversary of TGFU. We also want to showcase such a wide range of uh, research into this field over the past 40 years. So for a month or two months, we will be promoting through our social media channels the different publications that are out there. So we have books and we have sort of a lot of them on our website, particularly English screen, and we are also encouraging um, other countries and other languages to showcase which ones they have. But we will also be demonstrating the different articles that have been published and we will be presenting those through our social media channels. In January, we uh, provided a video of Len Almond, who was discussing the formation of the TGFU model from our 30th anniversary celebrations. Uh, we want re-showcase the, the anecdotes that he provided. Similarly, we will be doing an interview with Rod Thorpe and David Bunker to showcase from their side of view what happened and any questions that we feel are relevant now that we have reached this 40th anniversary milestone. And just one last project that we've got going on at the moment is our video project. 
Um, so we are encouraging people around the world to take a picture, to take a short video, uh, showcase how many people are celebrating games-based approaches. So we would like to encourage any of you to take part, uh, grab your students, your colleagues, etc. It can be simple as a sort of class photo waving. It could be something more substantial, explaining why TGFU and games-based approaches are important for you, um, how you use them in your practice. It could be through the practical demonstration of what you're doing with your students and colleagues. We're going to put all these videos together, make them like one long video and showcase it. We would like to highlight the number of people around the world who are using games-based approaches. So if you do have any opportunity within your um, time to please get involved in some of these celebrations and join us in supporting the 40th anniversary of games-based approaches. Thank you so much for listening and you can contact us through our website at tgfu.info or you can email us at tgfu.info at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thanks to the four presenters for their presentation. It was really interesting. And I, I was uh, not aware about the diversity of the, the game-based approach. And it was in, very interesting to, to see this. And uh, also, uh, it was interesting to, to see that you are proposing uh, many information on, on your uh, website. And uh, such resource could be uh, used by all people attending here. Well, uh, it's my role, and thanks also for respecting the time. And, and now it's up to me to, to do the same with the Q&A. Then uh, one question for, uh, from Benoit uh, was about the, the application of the TGFU model in teaching individual sport, then uh, the general generalization of TGFU in some activities. And... Uh, Alison and Rebecca uh, answer already in the chat, but maybe the four presenters could add something with these answer. Maybe Linda? I, uh, um, I'd go with what Rebecca is talking about. I, this is not, uh, individual sports is hasn't been my focus. So if other people know about that and have seen research, I think Richard Light has done some stuff with that and particularly with martial arts and um, perhaps Shane wants to add into that. Yeah, so I just popped into the chat um, at the 2016 TGFU conference, I can't remember her name, uh, was discussing her PhD thesis, which was in TGFU and sailing. So I've popped a link to that uh, in the chat bar. Uh, Richard Light has written about TGFU or, or Game Sense Approach and Swimming. Terry Magias has written about a game-based approach, Game Sense Approach and Teaching Swimming. Richard Light's also published about using a game-based approach to teach martial arts. And I, I reckon in one of his positive pedagogy books, he's also talked about applying the principles of a Game Sense Approach to teaching track and field. Um, Glenna Mesdros, who is based up in Queensland. He presented at the 2019 Ashburn International Conference on how to use a game sense approach in the coaching of uh, rowing. So there's been a few, not many, but certainly the key principles that we outlined earlier that are associated with game-based approaches stemming from the TGFU for, what are they, exaggeration, sampling, uh, representation, and forgotten the fourth one off the top of my head, have certainly been applied to individual sports in the literature. Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Shane, for that. It's uh, very interesting also to, to see that there are so many resources. But uh, do you propose this resource in, in, on, in your website, for example? Because I believe that practitioners and colleagues 
uh, working in uh, uh, teacher education, uh, maybe they don't know all these reference and uh, works that were done. Then the, the question is to know if there is a place where these reference and explanation about the, the concrete, the, the practical uh, things are proposed. Because when, when you have a, a scientific paper, it's interesting to, to see the evidence uh, that uh, TGFU and game, uh, uh, games are using, uh, but it's difficult to, to see how it works on the field. Then do you have such references? Um, I, yeah, actually, I mean, I have to say, I'm going to give a lot of uh, accolades to Ellen and her efforts to try to capture as much as she can the resources that are out there and that have been, we've been restructuring the website to, to include all, uh, as many resources as we can find. And also the idea of social media and these blogs that Ellen was talking about, inviting folks to explain their their particular variation or a particular focus they might have, like the questioning feature of it. Uh, Ellen, do you want to add to that? Thank you, Linda. Um, I, as part of my role within the PGFU SIG is to develop the website. Um, it is currently an ongoing process. Um, we have sections within there that is for learning or what research and we have for resources and practical applications. We're also trying to look at different countries and see what is available within national organizations and promote that as well. It is sort of like say, an ongoing process of building the website up. Um, so if anyone does have any resources that they think would be appropriate, please contact me on the email address provided. Um, but also, as I said, I will be developing it over this year, provide resources and information for practitioners. Okay, then uh, following the question from, uh, uh, from Benoit, then um, maybe um, you know that uh, physical education is uh, evolving now to physical education and health education. How, do, how does TGFU will uh, react or will evolve uh, in this situation? We're trying to hold strong to our content. Uh, and, um, and, and, and part of that includes physical education and health. And I think there's a lot to be said for what games can do under those realms. I mean, there's even evidence in uh, the literature from Steve Harvey and groups from Edinburgh around promoting moderate to vigorous physical activity um, within TGFU. So there are places and spots within that. Um, I think our initiatives around um, social justice and equity, I mean, we don't have the answers to the questions, but if we don't ponder and struggle with the questions, we can't make those moves. So yes, there's a changing tide in, in physical education and health, but that doesn't mean we can't adjust with that. And that's part of the strategic planning process. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, Shane, Mark. Shane, I, I David, yes? David, 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 David. yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, Mark. Uh, I would like to uh, to add that uh, a good game-based approach is uh, has a lot to do with uh, health in general, not only fitness, but in, in wellness. And the affective domain is impact a lot uh, because kids really have a good experience in the sport. So uh, I think it's not something opposite if you go for a wellness approach. So at the end, it's a good pedagogy impact thought in, in, in wellness and well-being during the school. So I think it's, it's a way to, to focus on this uh, domain. Um, also through the affected domain is very important for health and mental health. So uh, okay. we need to, to, to get that on, on account. Good. Very nice. OK, thanks for the, for the reactions. And Shane added in the chat that uh, uh, health education is uh, already since years in, in, in the Australia. Yes, of course, uh, but uh, you know that uh, that evolution is, uh, well, it's not so old in other part of the world. And okay, you have a, a big experience there and we, we have to share that. 
Okay, uh, Eduardo had another uh, question about peasant questioning became one of uh, the principles of the model um, uh, in addition to being linked with the teacher's uh, perfor performance. Then maybe you could uh, answer to that question. I, so the questions are uh, central, absolutely central. I think it's one of the more difficult parts for the teachers to be to move themselves away from uh, being the teacher as a director and to the facilitator, but the questions are are one of the key features of that. And I I, I think it says something that pre-service teacher education has to work on all the time. And that's what moves it from teaching as directing to teaching as facilitating and problem solving. And you need that as a central feature of that, whether it is within the games that you freeze it or was it whether it is after the initial game in which you try to uh, foreground the, the problem you're going to solve. Okay, then uh, there was also uh, another question uh, about maybe the transformation of TGTU to uh, game-based approach and then uh, it's a more philosophical uh, aspect, maybe. Uh, could, could you answer to that? Um, yeah, I am. We'll, we'll see. That's one of the reasons we're here now and we're in this celebration of the 40th and perhaps some of you are forecasting what might be on the docket. Um, so that's a fair statement by us. Uh, uh, but I think, you know, we're here to hold kind of in a way uh, dear to our hearts what all the work that's come before us and the celebration of the 40th with uh, uh, Bunker, Thorpe and Allman as a, a place that it, we began. Uh, but there is no question we're in the third generation of who we are and you just never know what you might see in the future, so. Yep. But you know, uh, uh, you gotta create space and time for change, and we're trying to do that in a in a slow, thoughtful, and inclusive manner. So, thank you for the question. Okay, okay. then I, I don't remember who asked it, but uh, it it was in the chat. Then maybe one question from me, and maybe uh, because we are also uh, physical education teacher educators, then maybe a question about how you prepare your student to use uh, the game-based approach? I can defer yeah. anybody else want to chat, David? Yeah, yeah, I can go for it. I mean, uh, that's a very good question, uh, mainly because most of our students have a strong profile in sport. So with a different kind of approach, so you really need to, them to live the approach. So it was, uh, also, Judy also, and I, I think Steve Mitchell, I don't know, with Connie Collier, that uh, get this name about uh, living the curriculum. So it's very important that our students live the approach, uh, experience how to improve their skills. Maybe even better if they are in a, a sport that they are weak. So they are really learning uh, in, a, in this kind of approach to experience that they it's an opportunity to, to learn while, while playing and adapting to their own levels. So yeah, an experience that is a different kind of impact in different domains, not only in, a, in the motor learning. So I think that's very important. So we try to do that in, a, in our teacher training. Okay, maybe, maybe another, uh, another colleague could uh, add something. Anybody else? Shane, Ellen? Yeah. Rebecca? Rebecca's got a hand up. Oh, uh, yeah. Go, go, Rebecca. go, Rebecca. You go, Rebecca. <laughs> okay, gonna party like it's my birthday. Okay, hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was just thinking, I often like to, to insert TGFU when I'm teaching in a class about inclusion. So I teach a theories of learning and inclusion class as well as a physical education class. And with the whole constraint um, led pedagogy where we get to you know be creative and and we look at um, proscriptive rules and um, prescriptive rules and then I get them to think about constraints and how we can change a game to really focus on inclusion 
And I like doing that in a course that's not necessarily physical education, but just, you know, I have elementary teachers that, you know, they're not really wired about teaching movement. And I find it's so tangible, you know, when you think about how you can change the size of a ball or, or how we're touching, you know, whether you have a pool noodle or, and to me, um, it's where we really need to go. And that's why I was so excited about the theme of this conference that we were supposed to have, you know, where we have this focus on inclusion. And I don't know if anyone else wants to speak to that, but I think that's the wave of the future is to really be creative about games, about our rules and the way we can adapt and experience something that, you know, is really joyful and, and connecting us in, in meaningful ways. So that's, that's just one layer I wanted to add that I think is so important for teacher education. Thank you, Rebecca. Always nice to see you. Oh, I miss you. Um, so I think um, that's, a, that's a good statement. I think we are, and one of the hardest things to do is to deconstruct the game, keep deconstructing it into meaningful bits so that they can see the joy in, in having a tactic done successfully or a skill and tactic, the, the idea of that successfully. And I, I do think that's one of our challenges to keep, keep the keep abstractions of the game going forward. And that's that comes with um, scaffolding and levels of tactical complexity and stuff and stuff like that. So thank you for that. And I, I also think one of the undervalued parts of uh, this model is the um, a game form. So that's the game form to me is a, a two versus one, three v two, things that exaggerate uh, what might happen offensively or defensively. So uh, thank you, Rebecca. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay, but maybe we, we need to finish now. Uh, well, very, very <laughs> short, uh, Shane, please. Yeah, I posted into the chat a figure that shows how we do it at Flinders University, where we progress from the game sense approach through to what we call sport literacy, um, which is the functional use of sport knowledge in society. Okay. Well, right. Then uh, this doc that document will be available. Uh, I suppose that Cassandra will, will have it and then uh, it will be added uh, to the document. Now, uh, it, I'm sorry, but uh, as we, we started on time, we need to finish on, on time. And then uh, thanks again uh, to the presenters and audience. And of course, happy birthday to TGFU. Uh, it, it was uh, your day and your years. Then, and before closing this uh, ISF Connect, I would like to recall also that uh, ISF is celebrating uh, in uh, 2022. Uh, it's uh, 60th birthday, uh, and then uh, the association was created in 1962 in Paris. Then, very nice to, to celebrate your 30th uh, anniversary and our 60th anniversary. Then, uh, in this case, in, uh, I invite uh, you uh, to participate to the actions that are organized uh, along the, that year, and in particular, the ISF 6460, project consisting to, uh, on, of sharing a one minute video clips, clip, and then just take a look, look on the ISF web page and blog uh, page. If you want to receive news from uh, ISF, do, no, do not hesitate to share your email address with us and maybe right now in the chat, because maybe some of you are not uh, on the mailing list and do not receive the, the ISF block, then please just, uh, if you don't receive the ISF block, uh, just type your uh, email address in, in the chat and then it will be possible for us to, uh, to add you uh, on the mailing list. Uh, thanks again and uh, have a nice weekend, hoping that peace will come back as soon as possible on earth. Then uh, on yeah. that, yeah, it's important for all of us to live in a peaceful uh, situation. Thank you, and uh, you you'll be welcome to our next ISEP Connect. You will receive information about this, and uh, again, join us and join TGFU 
they are two very nice organizations working for physical, uh, physical education, uh, effectiveness and quality. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.